Now what we're going to do is to take a uh, simulated residential layout for cold water only, cold water only, and I'd like you to go ahead and make a drawing, get a piece of paper and make a drawing of this. We're going to start with the meter and we're going to come in here to the fur to a hose bib and then we're going to branch down to a clothes washing machine and we're going to continue on and we have a, to a bath, we have a lavatory, a shower, a water closet, a kitchen sink and another hose bib and I'll put some more information on but I want to leave this on here for you right now to go ahead and make the drawing and then we're going to put in some uh, dimensions and we're going to put in some water fixture unit values for each of these items. We're going to look them up in table 6-4. So take a minute and uh, maybe we can zoom in a little closer so you can see that uh, a little bit better. That might be just a little bit better for you there to see. Okay. Make your drawing. Then we'll pause. We'll come back and I'll have some dimensions on there for you so we can figure out the lengths of the pipe. And uh, we'll, uh, then we'll work through this. And what we'll do is we'll size each section of pipe here for you. Alright now, from the meter to the first T here is 10 feet, then we're running 6 feet out to the hose bib, and then another 10 feet in between these T's, then 8 feet in between here, 12 feet down to the clothes washer, Oops. and 6 feet up to the lab, and then 2 foot branch to the lab, then 4 foot, then 4 foot, then 2 foot to the water closet, 2 foot to the shower, and then 15 feet over to the kitchen sink, 4 foot, three feet out to the hose bib and then six feet up to the kitchen sink. Now what I want you to do next is find the developed length. Remember from our definitions earlier in the video, developed length was the distance through the fittings and what we're looking for here in developed length is the distance from the meter to the most remote fixture and I'm not sure if you can tell which one it is. I don't want a, I don't want a total of all the branches, but I just want a, a distance from the meter to the most remote branch. And I can tell you right now, it looks like it's going to be the kitchen sink. Okay, now the next thing I want you to calculate, or just to see if you got the same as I did on our, on our developed length. We, we, this is how we figured the developed length. We figured 10 feet, plus 10 feet, plus 8 plus 15, plus that 4, plus that 3. The 4 is from here to here, and it looks a little confusing here, but the 3 foot is from here to here. So my addition adds up to 50 feet. Now, in the developed length, we don't consider the branch lengths. We only consider the distance from the meter through the most remote outlet, and it happens to be this hose bib. So the developed length is going to be 50 feet. That's important. The next thing I've calculated here, and I want you to look at it, is the water fixture units from table 6-4. The first hose bib is valued at 2.5 water fixture units. For each additional hose bib, it is one fixture unit. Then the clothes washer is 4.0, the lavatory is 1.0, the shower is 2.0, the water closet, and I've considered it here, a 1.6 gallons per flush gravity. Now you'd have to know that because there are several choices in table 6.4 for uh, water closets. But we're going to consider a 1.6 gallon per flush, that's worth 2.5 water fixture units. And the kitchen sink is valued at 1.5 water fixture units. Now if you add this up, let me check my addition. And get your calculator out here, and we'll turn it on. and. We'll go 2.5 plus 1.0 plus 4.0 plus 1.0 plus 2.0 plus 2.5 plus 1.5 equals 14 and a half. Well, what do you know? I got the correct answer. I actually did that in my head and got the correct answer. 4.5 
water fixture units. All right, now, once we know the developed length and we know the water fixture units, the next thing we need to know for sizing water pipe is what is the pressure? What is the pressure of our system? Just for argument's sake, I want you to go to page 56, look at table 6-5. Okay, uh, notice that there are three distinct tables in ta uh, of table 6-5, and here's your differences. Your pressure range is 30 to 45 psi. This one, the pressure range is 45 to 60 psi, and the last one is a pressure range of over 60 psi. And you'll recall from our discussion that if we're over 80 psi, we have to put a pressure reducing valve. And if we're under 30 here, it looks like we're going to have to, we don't have any way to do this. Uh, we wouldn't have uh, any uh, table to use, so uh, you'd have to put a pump in there and get at least 30 psi, although inadequate is termed as 15. I'm not trying to tell you anything different there. Okay, now, for the sake of our problem, let's assume that we're going to have. 62 psi, and that means we would use the bottom table down here to size our piping. Okay, 62 psi. So this is where we're going to be. 62 psi. So let's go back to our drawing now and do the sizing. All right, now here is how you size it. At segment number one, we have to ask ourselves how many water fixture units is this length of pipe carrying? Well, this length of pipe is actually only supplying the kitchen sink and the hose bib. So that's going to be a total of four water fixture units, or four WFU. Now we go to table 6-5, page 56, and we're using the pressure range table of over 60 psi. Now, if you'll notice, at the top of the column, our developed length, we stated, was 50, but there's not a 50. It's in between the 40 and the 60. So we use the 60 column. We come down till we find four water fixture units, and you'll notice that it is 7. There's a 7 there. Well, four water fixture units is less than 7, so we use the 7, and our building supply, or branch, is 1 half inch, and We'll look, let's look at that on the, t on the um, let's go actually go to the chart and look at it, but we're going to look up and we're going to verify one half inch. Let's take a look at that on the, uh, on the, uh, on page 56.